Holy shit balls, listeners, it's April. Can you believe that? That means that as of the 1st of April, we are two years old. So happy birthday to Artsy Gals. Um, and we are celebrating later towards the end of the month, our 100th episode, uh, for that 100th episode, we are going to be broadcasting live on our Facebook page. And we're also going to be answering all of the frequently asked and not so frequently asked listener questions. So if you have a question, email those questions to two artsy gals at gmail.com. You can also call us and leave a voicemail with your question at 503-395-7190. And if you do that, we might even play your call during the episode. Um, You can ask us questions on our Facebook as well, which we are Two Artsy Gals on Facebook, if you don't already follow us there. And tweet us a question on Twitter, which we're Two Artsy Gals on Twitter also. And I suppose you could probably even ask us a question on Instagram because we're Two Artsy Gals there too. So visit us on all of our social medias. Um, Part of what we're going to be talking about in this month is uh, I noticed all the podcasts that I listen to regularly are doing like their spring drive month. So we're kind of doing a spring drive, but kind of not. Uh, we have a new thing. It's called a Patreon account. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a site that allows you to support individual creative product projects with a one-time big donations. Or what we're trying is to get monthly supporters. So you can be, become a patron of Two Arts and Gals. If you love this podcast and you want to keep it going for another year and you would like us to be able to have a small option operating budget, which is kind of what we're going for, uh, you can pledge from $5, anywhere from $5 to what is the highest one? Let me see. I think we have $5 to $45 options, Uh, but there are five, 10, 20, and $45 pledges that you would do monthly. You can set that up to automatically go to us monthly. Um, We have some fun little rewards that you can get for doing so. And What that will do is allow us to keep the show going. It'll uh, cover costs of hosting, web hosting, and for our domain, it will cover, because that's going to renew pretty soon, and it will also cover our storage, like our hosting fees, so that we're able to keep all of our episodes available for you guys to listen to available online. Um, It'll also give us a little budget that where we can buy products that we wouldn't necessarily work with individually, but that maybe we want to try out and tell you guys about, or maybe you want to know about. So you can do that. If you, if you want to do that, you can visit us at patreon.com slash two artsy gals. That's, uh, com slash two artsy gals. And yeah, that would be really great. Cause we are a 100% listener supported show. What doesn't get covered by our listeners uh, comes out of our own pocket. And, you know, we're starving artists. So we're bringing you a free podcast that we kind of pay for sometimes. So we're hoping that maybe our listeners that are loyal and that love us will want to help us out a little bit month- monthly. Um, if you don't want to do the Patreon account, you can also support us uh, by doing a one-time donation through PayPal. There's a link on our website, which is twoartsygals.com. It's actually a button. Click on that button and it will send you to a PayPal form that'll allow you to do a one-time donation. Um, You can also just get us something off of our Amazon wish list, which is there's also a button for us for on our website and it will take you to our wish list and you can choose what item you would like to have sent to us. So you can do it that way. Uh, We love your support. We love our listeners and we just want to keep the show going strong. So we hope you like us enough to support us. Uh, Like I said, this month, we've got a lot coming up. We're going to be, you know, we have some fun episodes happening and we have our big 100th episode that we're going to do at the end of the month. So enjoy the show. Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird, then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes, 
So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Lonnie. And you're listening to two artsy gals. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I love it when we do that. Bah. Oh my god. <laughs> Fizzy water. Fizzy water gets you every time. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, we're going to be talking today about fabric paint. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to have some examples. And I think what we're going to do, because we haven't had a lot of time to do examples, I've had a lot of shit going on this month, in the last couple months. I have my scarf I could be using. Oh, now. yeah. That's I right. I did it. Yeah, and I, uh, I don't know. I feel like Lonnie and I started, well, I started a second podcast, and mm-hmm. I was kind of trying to get that shit together in the last couple months, and I'm getting ready to go on a trip for it's a week. It's called Awesome Talks. You can look it up. Yeah, Awesome Talks. Um, it's pretty heavy sometimes, although for some reason I, I haven't listened, listened to it yet. In the, I listened to it last night. It was awesome. Okay, okay. It was good. I don't want my mom to hear it, so that's why I'm like wondering i need to share it without it sharing it with that's why mom. i made the group so you can add people to the group okay because otherwise it doesn't have any like any website or okay anything like that i should actually probably make it a private group that we add people to instead of a public group but we can block people from it so yeah or you can make it closed just closed so group that's it yeah giant, then, yeah giant. <laughs> that's okay. a different thing Lonnie I think jining is a different thing <laughs> I mean like I would appreciate it if you asked before you jine <laughs> but I don't want to be involved in it anyway so I'm going to say no <laughs> jine on my mind <laughs> <laughs> we could draw a jine with puff paint ooh a puffy jine that's perfect <laughs> My brother one time gave me his Playgirl with, uh, or Playboy with Dita Von Tees in it. I love Dita Von Tees. Yeah. Um, because he said she had a, what did he call it? He said her vagina looked like a baseball mitt because it was too puffy. <laughs> I'm like, you're a dick. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like skinny vaginas? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Is there such a thing? Like, no. I don't get it. How did we get to vaginas from whatever the fuck we were Isn't talking like about? Speech impediment. That's okay. I have one too. Um, so anyway, for examples, that's what I was getting to. I think that Lonnie and I are going to try to make special t-shirts. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you won't actually hear this before the episode airs, but, well, maybe you will. Yeah, because it's our last episode. Wait, so we have to make them by Monday? Yeah, by Monday. So we're gonna, okay. So over the weekend, we're going to try to make t-shirts that we will wear Monday when we do our 100th episode. So... By the time this episode goes up, it will have already happened. It will have been four days prior. But we're going to make t-shirts and show them off on that episode. Ah, I'm going to try a method I saw, um, but different. But they used a pantyhose and Mod Podge to block out the areas that you don't want painted, you know? And then... So you're doing like silk screening. Like silk screening. But on, oh, the, on the cheeks. On the cheeks. Yeah, with the... Pantyhose, which I don't even know if you can even buy those anymore. Yeah, you can. They're cheap. Okay. Cool. You can get them in like Fred Meyer in the old lady sock section. Okay. Like the knee high pantyhose. Yeah. That would stretch enough, maybe? Yeah. Oh, totally. It would. Okay. Totes would. And then an embroidery hoop. Yeah. To, yeah. So, yeah, you're stretching it out and you're. And I think I'm going to use a. I'm going to make a stencil out of the um, butcher paper, the iron on stencil, which I love to do. And it's awesome. So we'll see how our shirts go. Mm-hmm. This is all contingent upon whether or not Joanne's has uh, t-shirts big enough to cover my boobies. Um, they might have a Goodwill dude shirt that's big th- enough. Or that Walmart place. Or like Walmart. Fred Meyer. Honestly, very rarely has t-shirts that are big enough to cover my boobies. Wow. I have giant boobs. It seems like they would. Not in the way that I like them to. I don't like short t-shirts. I want them long enough to cover up my belly fat. 
Mm -hmm. But I wear a 38 double H, so it's hard to cover them sometimes. Yeah. Like, I just got a new bra, and I was complaining to Lonnie earlier that it now my boobs are higher, so all my shirts are shorter in the front. It's upsetting. <laughs> but it's just boob, big boob problems. Yeah. Big boob problems. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to have examples for you. Lonnie also made a beautiful scarf a while back. Um, uh, don't wear a beautiful well, scarf. It's, like, it's very 80s to me. It reminds me of 80s fabric that was just, like, splotches of paint and random color that's okay there's nothing you know? wrong with that i think that paint splotches are probably coming back because all the other 80s things are i know the thing that i'm and dreading the most things. so this is what i'm dreading the most about 80s comeback stuff so uh, men are wearing their hair very long right now we're kind of i think seeing the end of the man bun phase and what I'm afraid of is that it's going to go to the mullet phase because they have all this hair and it would be very easy to like fucking feather that shit in the front and then have mm -hmm. your business in the front party in the back. And that does not need to be revived. I don't know if Ben would be brave enough. Uh, they well, don't... some ironic mm -hmm. hipster probably yeah. already is doing it, but. Well, I mean, I think there are guys that still have hockey hair. Like, like it's a thing. Like, like there mm -hmm. are still mullets. Yeah. There are people that never stopped wearing mullets. Yeah. But it's just for most people a pretty, I had a mullet. Yeah, I did too. I had a pretty awesome mullet. Mine was all bleached in the back and I had pink stripes in it. Wow. Yeah. And then I got in trouble for vandalizing a teacher's car. It was bad. <laughs> I should not have done it. Um, and it was on my juvenile record. But as punishment, my mother made me cut my the bleach, the awesome, off of my mullet. <laughs> and she was like, thank God. She's like, your hair is making me behave <laughs> like a hooligan. Ah, that's funny. She just, any excuse to get that. I really, really there. wanted Just to be a it. punk rocker in a small town. And it didn't work. Yeah, I guess I had a mullet, too. That's pretty mullety, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, seriously, I didn't tell you, A, your brother Hilarious. and you look so much alike. It's scary. It killed yeah. me, because the picture he posted of, like, when his car got broken into, yes, wearing his, his, his angry face. picture. Yes. Also, I kind of have a crush on your brother. Aww. He's super cute. <laughs> He's super cute. That's just yeah. it. He's cute. I want to hug him and rub my boobs on him. <laughs> oh, my God. Your brother listens to this, doesn't he? He might. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Lonnie's brother and Lonnie's brother's wife or whoever. I'm sure he'll be stoked on that. I, I don't really want to rub it. my boobs on you very much. <laughs> 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 Only for a second. Just a little bit. <laughs> just the tips <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay my coffee is needs lunch now making me crazy <laughs> and my blood sugar went <laughs> yeah I do need lunch look at this Bernie Sanders shirt oh he's riding a unicorn <laughs> yep. I love unicorns oh, yes me too I want to put a unicorn on my shirt I want to, too. I know. Let's make unicorn shirts. Okay. But I wanted to say, like, make some cool shit, yo. Yeah. But should I write shit on my shirt? I don't know. Should you use asterisks for your... I? H and I? No, just the I. Make some cool stuff. Yeah, it's not the no, same. Make some cool shit, yo. Yeah. And then a unicorn. And no one but people who watch our or listen to our podcast will know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. I have a bunch of unicorn shirts, though. You do? Like, I have a unicorn shirt collection. So we should be thinking of another critter? <gasps> I, oh, wait, I have one narwhal shirt. Mm, I don't have a narwhal shirt. I have a narwhal shirt that is narwhals. They're... Their horns are lit up like lightsabers, and they're fighting. Nice. It is awesome. That is awesome. It is my favorite shirt, and it's starting to crack because my boobs stretch it out Aww. a little, but I love that shirt. Your boobs are hard on t-shirts. They are very hard on t-shirts. Yeah. Very hard indeed. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> and other people's t-shirts. <laughs> we should talk. Yeah, I know. I used to steal t-shirts because my brothers thought I made permanent boob marks in their shirts. So... If I wanted one of their shirts, I would just wear it. And then, oh, they punch me. 
<laughs> like, you ruined my shirt. Have it. It's yours. The boom marks will never come out. And I'm like, wash it and dry it. And I'm pretty sure the boom marks go away. They do. Also, when I look at my t-shirts, I do not see boom marks. Like, I don't know. I think it's a silly thing. Yeah. It's a weird thing. It is. It's It's just a silly boy thing. Yeah. I don't know. Male listeners, if we have any, um, can you provide actual evidence of boob mark, so boob marks wears your t-shirt, in a shirt, like permanent shirt. boob marks that like are irreversible. I want. It seems like you'd have to have some giant freaking knockers. I have giant freaking knockers, <laughs> and I kind of always have, like for my body well, size. Okay, so if the shirt, if the guy is smaller than you, maybe if he's small and you stretch it, I mean, I guess you could stretch it out. But irreversibly, <laughs> like washing it and drying it. I feel like the washer and dryer fix. My husband yeah. told me that I made nipple grooves in one of his shirts once. I don't know what nipple grooves are. Apparently they're bad. Did, but I maintain. No, I never wear things without a bra. Okay, he's bold. Like I may have worn he's it as a night shirt, but um, my husband is twice the size I am. So there's no way. That my boobs stretched out his shirt. No, he's full of it. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Stop being a big baby. Yeah. That's what I have to say about that. Or I'm going to poke a fucking chopstick into the nipple parts of your shirt. Also, when I did that. that, make a boob hole there. My, I got his Reverend Horton Heat t-shirt that said, where's Jimbo? So, ha, ha, ha. Nice. He just got mad and said, keep it. I'm like, all right. I like this shirt. (laughs) I bought it for you because I liked it. So, (laughs) there you go. Um, Quickly. So, We've kind of talked about the fabric painting for Mm t-shirts and Lonnie and I are going to do that for examples. However, I want to go more into what you can do with it artistically Mm -hmm. and different methods. But I just quickly want to explain that the difference between now I can't find the website that I pulled up or remember where I pulled it up at. Uh, The difference, there is a slight difference between fabric paint and regular acrylic paint. Which I have painted t-shirts and other things with acrylic paint. It can be done. Um, and or you get the fabric medium and then well, mixes with That's it. what I was just going to say. There's a medium that you can buy to mix with regular acrylic yeah. paint. And so like cool. crafting paint, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Not like acrylic paint you paint the side of your house with. Yeah, no, just crafty paint. Yeah, the cheap crafty paint. And so the, the difference is it contains a binding agent that's specifically da- designed to cling to fabrics. And it will adhere better than acrylic paint. And, um, it's a little bit thicker. So it, I think it also makes it a little bit more flexible because if you've ever painted fabric or gotten paint on fabric that you didn't want to have paint on it, you can flake it off. Yeah. It it gets real, it stains permanently, I think, but it also, it gets hard and cracky and, you know, whatever. But alcohol will take it out, the stain. Oh, good to know. Yeah. Cause Scott had a jacket that he was bummed, leaned against some wet paint and he just, I really it with alcohol and he thought i was like this amazing like it's cool i, I know that if cool you have a leather jacket and you get acrylic paint on it hairspray will take this, oh, take it out okay i only know that because i had a friend in high school whose parents owned a leather shop and another friend of mine and i were in used a public restroom and they had painted and didn't put a sign up saying that the wall had wet paint on it. Oh, so my friend leaned against the wall in her leather jacket waiting for me to go pee. And when we came out, I walked up behind her and I'm like, Oh my God. Oh, she had a big sucks. stripe of wet paint across the back of her jacket. But our friend was like, no, never fear. Do-do-do. She came in with a can of hairspray and totally cleaned it off. Awesome. I don't know that it works on suede, but it would oh, work yeah. on leather. So yeah, suede's suede problematic. No stain. And I'm not sure you'd want to use alcohol in that either. Mm-mm. Um, anyway, so fabric paint. Yes, you can paint t-shirts. You can do, we had an episode about stencils mm-hmm. a while back where we covered ways that you could make stencils for painting t-shirts and doing your own shit like that. So go back and listen to that mm-hmm. if you want to know more about it. Um, and yeah, there's that. And we'll put pictures of our stuff that we made up and we'll put a picture of Lonnie's scarf that she made up. She just rolled her eyes like, no, we won't. I don't want people to see that. You can see it. I think it's kind of cool, but it's just, it's not very practical, practical because it is still so stiff. Yeah. I wonder, like, if you wash it, have you washed it? Will it get softer? I've washed it once. I've tried it. It probably would if I Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Or vinegar, I think they said soak it in vinegar or something. I don't know. And then maybe. And that's the advantage of using even, I mean, you use the additive or whatever, but mm-hmm. I think the advantage of buying actual fabric paint. Yeah. Versus yeah. using acrylic paint. If it's something wearable. And if it's wear and it, like that, it would have been more proper to use a dye than a, for mm-hmm. what I was doing, because then it would stay soft. Yeah. Like the fabric, you know, I wasn't. But yeah, no, I was just trying to shit. You were experimenting, but yeah, I yeah. do think that, you know, if you listen to the show, your regular listener, you know that Lonnie and I are pretty into like textile arts. Mm-hmm. It's our jam. Mm-hmm. And acrylic paint aside, like you can use paint to add to your textile art. Mm-hmm. Like the embroidery project that Lonnie and I did for the giveaway mm-hmm. uh, was the with the Sasquatch. What was it called? Sasquatch and Squirrel Go Yogi or Yogi Bear. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a, a mix of different methods. I think there was some felting involved. There was applique involved. There was embroidery involved. And then I used color or a watercolor pencil to do the background. Mm-hmm. And I just drew it in there. And I think I did maybe a little bit of grass and some stuff. I drew it in there and then went over it with water. Mm-hmm. And it turned out really great. And, it, and you know, that's a piece of art. It's not going to get washed. So it's yeah. permanent. It mm-hmm. stays there. Um, I think you could do the same with acrylic paint. I painted the face of the Sasquatch on with actual acrylic paint. Mm-hmm. And I also wonder what would happen if you mixed a tiny bit of fabric medium with your watery watercolor. If that would get it to stay, I don't know. It'd be, yeah. it'd be a fun to experiment with. Yeah, right. definitely experiment around with it. But these I, pigments are so nice. They are so pretty. Nah. They're such pretty color. Um, I've also painted. Uh, I have a brain farting. I do need to eat lunch. I'm getting stupid right now. I did a background for an embroidery with that. Yeah. I, did the uh, yellow watercolor. I made it look like lined paper, like yellow lined oh, paper. Oh, cool. Yeah, by painting it and then embroidered on to that. that so did fun. you embroider the stripes, the lines from the paper on, or did no, you just... I painted them too. Awesome. Or I drew them actually with a... Pen. With a, like a pen, pen or color pencil, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it looked like yellow paper. That was fun. I liked that. I think that unless you're totally into fiber arts, people kind of don't realize that you can use fabric as a substrate or background for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, canvas is fabric guys. Yeah. It's treated with gesso, but it's fabric. Like fabric is a a thing. And I love, love, love cheap cheap muslin. I have cheap muslin all the time. Whatever you want it Mm -hmm. to look and then embroider on top of that, embellish it however you want. It's so fun. I want to do some experimenting with, um, dark fabrics embroidering on dark fabrics yes i think that would be pretty yes i want to do that you could do you could do velvet painting oh and my girl i didn't even do research on velvet paintings i think we should have a whole velvet painting episode yeah what do you think i think i want to do one now (sighs) i don't know man no you don't don't maybe i do i don't know they're awesome to look at but (laughs) in that Wow, that's awesome kind of way. Maybe cool and kitschy to have one. Well, I want to combine it with embroidery yeah. and stuff. Like, see what it's like to stretch velvet onto a hoop. Yeah. I mean, I guess stretchy velvet. Yeah, but I don't think that you would it. want stretchy velvet. I think you no. would want regular velvet, and then that would be more t- It would, If it was stretchy, it yeah, wouldn't get as true. taut. So, I feel like I'm setting weird. My back is... Uh-oh. There we go. Oh, my back's killing me. <laughs> I slept weird. The night before last, I, I woke up flat on my fucking back with my arms above my head. I never sleep like that, ever. I'm a stomach sleeper. Yeah. I got too hot, though. Are your shoulders aching now? My shoulders hurt. My lower mm-hmm. back hurts. And the weirdest thing, I think that my dog and my cat conspired, like, at the foot of the bed. They were like, dude, she's been sleeping for way too long. Let's wake her up by doing something really fucking weird. And then they, like, talked out the details. And so the first sensation that kind of annoyed me awake slightly was my cat licking between my big toe and my second no. toe repeatedly. And no, then no. as I started to wake up, I became aware of the fact that my dog's face was really close to me and he started licking my armpit 
at the same time my cat was licking between my toes. What the fuck? And I was all like, no. this is, what the fuck is even happening yeah, right now? You so don't violating. lick armpits. No. Get out of here. And you with your scratchy ass tongue down there, I'm yeah. afraid you're going to bite my feet. Yeah, so no. get out of here. Sorry, that was loud. By the way. That's okay. I feel like we're being extra loud right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like, I'm still on a caffeine high from the tea I had earlier. And I feel like somebody wound me a little too tight. But it's not like a good, oh. it's like a, I'm going to hyperventilate and oh. start stabbing people any second. <laughs> ah. no. Fabric painting is so fun though. Seriously. Yeah. I you can do, yeah. So much with it. I, uh, the craft juice swap I did, the thing I got was this lady painted a um, shawl for me. Where she made little trees and little Sasquatches. So was it an actual them. like fabric painting? Like was that a theme for the swap or? No, we got to choose whatever. Um, yeah, whatever, and that just happened to be that we both did that. But that's kind of awesome. Yeah, I you never showed me yours. You didn't yeah. ever tell me that you got yours. I got it. It's a big. That's one. great. And actually, I just now have it hanging over my laundry room door because it's so cool. It's big to wear. But it looks great as like a wall hanging. It's now she painted cool. it, so is it stiff? No, because it's like stamped onto the fabric, so it's not fully coated in paint or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now another option to go and she with used fabric, paint. yeah, with painting <laughs> fabric is um, ink. The yeah. ink that they make for screen printing, mm -hmm. you can buy and you can paint with that mm -hmm. also. Fun. So, and that gets, I, I've never actually worked with it. It appears to be very sticky to me when I watch yes. videos because I do want to do, I think this summer we're going to do an episode about screen printing. I want to get a screen printing kit mm -hmm. and maybe have like your kid and my kid who's 20, he's not a kid, but mm -hmm. like maybe work on screen printing some shit mm -hmm. outside because I try to think of like hot weather things that we can do outside for summer shit for examples mm -hmm. I think that that would be an awesome thing to do yeah and I watched this video of them making um, textiles in the 60s when they were <gasps> the block printing one right? those fucking curtains I was like I want to make those you can't find those no and so I had this crazy I was starting to imagine design, how like, expensive make... those would be now oh, like Lord. that was just the Hand fucking way printed. they did shit like that then like that's just how they did so it so cool no it's amazing oh I love it and, and I, I love like, those I uh, make my own curtains by block printing but fuck, that's a huge undertaking like what mm -hmm. was I thinking we did an episode about um I have these designs and I'm like oh my god I'd have to carve those but then once mm -hmm. you have them carved you have it mm -hmm. and then you just use it over and over again we did an episode I feel like maybe was were you on the podcast when we did the episode about making your own fabric patterns like repeat patterns and stuff or was so. it, yeah, yeah yeah to make your own so, fabric yeah designs. I feel like maybe we're kind of doing a little bit of a repeat episode then I don't know it's been so long well, ago but yeah I guess so so right. we talked about fabric printing and other things. So it was about making patterns and making your own fabric. So this is a little bit different. Um, yeah, because like what Rachel was talking about, like her ideas for mixed media uh, fiber art, because she does those beautiful illustrations, but being able to illustrate on the fabric. Yeah, yeah, that's and then that's what we talked about. And do that other episode. things to mm -hmm. it as well. <laughs> so that would be artsy, amazing, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. My great grandmother used to do, um, and I want to actually make some from around my house. She made pillows by, uh, <clears throat> she would put a small layer of like batting, like the skinny batting behind a piece of fabric and then embroider the pattern, just the yeah. outline of it. So it was raised mm -hmm. pattern. And then she would make like throw pillows and stuff. Cute. She made one for me that had like a little pixie sitting on a moon. It was a little yellow pillow. I don't know whatever happened to it, but I think it would be kind of cool to do that with stuff around the house. Just, I don't know, like make Dr. Who pillow or just whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, but I also feel like fabric painting could be incorporated into that. Like once you did the outline and it was raised up, you could paint little details or different colors into 
the I think it has a lot of home decor applications is what I'm getting mm-hmm. at. Like not only with like you were talking about curtains, but also um incorporating embroidery and, and stuff into it, throw pillows and mm-hmm. and maybe throws for the back of couches or you know, whatever. Yeah. Or skirts I've seen really cute. Um hello. Yes. yes. Yeah. Really beautiful. Actually this one lady in one of my groups um was doing this bird design on the front of a she put a bird on it. She did, and it was gorgeous. Like I can't remember now the the name of like the Indian clothing that you wrap on. A sari. Yes, okay. thank you. Gosh, but yeah, she painted these beautiful birds on it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, you could embellish your clothing mm-hmm. with amazing designs. You totally Fabricate. could. So I totally cool. skipped over the puff paint. I got it out for a reason. Oh yes, puff paint. Because so. Y'all have done puff paint stuff. You can paint fabric, like names on fabric. It's it's silly. It's I fun. always imagine like seniors. You yes, know, like exactly. That's exactly what it's been you know, for. Uh, people do hats and stuff with it. But also, I have a tip. One of the awesome things that works for puff paint, puff paint works for, is if you are a crocheter or a knitter, and I'm pretty sure I talked about this in our crocheting and knitting episode, and you crochet or knit like house slippers or socks. You can make lines on the bottom of your yes. socks and slippers that make no, the puff paint dries and it's like no skid. Mm-hmm. And when it wears off, you just put more on. It's cheap. It dries quick. It's especially good for little kids because you don't want like little kids slipping and falling because I love crocheting slippers and socks. Mm-hmm. However, that's just slippery if you don't have carpets and you like, I yeah. have a pair of slippers that I made for myself that I am in love with. They're little skulls. And you can walk down the, I walk down the stairs and every time I hit, we, our stairs go from carpet to the pergo floors mm-hmm. and I go, whoosh, and I have bad balance. So sliding so is not you're good. So I puff paint the bottom. Awesome. I also made bunny slippers for when my friend Luna had, she has three granddaughters and so she had two granddaughters born in the same, like several months span of time. And then she has an older granddaughter. So I made all of them matching bunny slippers, including Aww. my friend Luna. And I just sent a tube of that with her because I made little bunny paw, like on the bottom, Aww. a pattern that looked like the bottom of a bunny foot. And it keeps the little kids from sliding all over the yeah. place. Yeah. Or it keeps your dumb ass from falling down too. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe on the bottom of a bathroom rug. Yeah. You keep it from slipping. I have a problem in my I've bathroom. Seen, seen people do it with caulking too, though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a problem in my bathroom because you know when rugs get old and then the, the, like the background starts to break down. Yes. And then it sticks to the bathroom floor. Yeah. And it won't come off. And I have like steamed it because I used to have a steam thingy. Yeah. Um, I have soaked it with all matter of cleaning products. Mm. I've scraped it. I don't know how to get it off in our house as a rental. So I feel like that's something I should figure Probably out. Probably on the Google somewhere. Somewhere. I've even tried Goo Gone. Oh my god! And it didn't work. You just made it permanent. No, I'm just kidding. Goo Gone <laughs> gets everything off. So I don't should. know what to do. Shit. Nail polish remover? I don't know. I feel like that would be a little bit dangerous too. Yeah. Like fill the bathroom full of fumes and a yeah. bathroom with no windows. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So... <laughs> I think that fabric paint is something that you guys should try that I think it's, I think it's worth experimenting with. Mm-hmm. Like, and again, muslin, muslin fabric is super cheap. Mm-hmm. Like you can buy the unbleached muslin for like, sometimes it's like fucking 50 cents a yard. Yeah. Like depending on what it is. And Joanne has sales all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, You can get heavier stuff. You can get bleached, whatever. But I think for experimenting purposes too, it's great to just have something around. Yeah, and you can also dye it mm-hmm. and then paint on it. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, there's so many. It takes dye wonderfully. Yes, it does. It really does. And Walmart sells that shit for even cheaper than Joanne's mm-hmm. all the time. Like, seriously cheap. Um, it, It's a great thing to experiment with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's neat to, uh, I think. You'd be the fanciest person in town. With you your toast good. Fancy clothing. I'll paint it up. I'll paint it up or your fancy textile wall hangings or your yes. awesome pillows. Yes. Yep. Do some stuff with fabric paint. 
guys. Yeah, you should, because the possibilities are endless yet again. Always, yep. always be creative. Don't be afraid to like just go, hey, will this work? Because yeah. you know what? If it doesn't work, the worst thing that happens is that it didn't work. Yeah. And then you're like, you don't oh, get like, there's not, it's not punishable you, by death or yeah. failures or and not. That's why I like using like recycled or um, just starting with cheaper materials. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. If like, it works you know, on a, works, something cheaper, then, can, then you can like upgrade it. Mm -hmm. You can like do it up. Mm -hmm. And I always like have things around. Okay. Sorry. Anybody who's ever gotten one of these is a gift for me, but I do experimental shit sometimes. And then I save it. And sometimes I like add it to the other things mm -hmm. or just give it away as a gift. Yeah. Because it worked and it was awesome. And I'm like, hey, so-and-so might love this. I'm yeah. actually planning a few textile art gifts lately. I got a... Embroidery's been the jam for a while, God, so... It's so fun. And now I'm in, into embroidering felt to fabric and then going from there and adding... And you can and use like, acrylic uh, paint and fabric paint on felt, too. It's actually very cute. Yes, the colors make me so happy. I know, me too. Yeah. And beads and shiny things too. Mm, shiny and things. Like, I'm like, this is so folky art, but it's so fun. But it's like, awesome. There's yeah. Nothing, nothing not awesome about it. Yeah. Um. So we gotta go pretty soon because I gotta get some fucking food. Me yeah. or I'm starting to get dizzy. Just thinking. Um. Yeah, food sounds good. So next week is so we've already by this time we've already live recorded. And I'm sure it went smashing well. Uh, our 100th episode. It was radical, I'm sure. If you missed that, I think that they stay on Facebook for a while, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. Like, doesn't it stay there? So I think it probably stays there. You can go watch that here. Or, you know, you listen to the episode when it comes up on whatever you use to listen to it on. Mm -hmm. But I don't. So, yeah, that's what's happening next week is our, our, 100, our 100th episode special is going to play so yeah and then we have some fun shit happening for may i don't know what it is yet but there will be fun shit i kind of changed our schedule around a little bit because there was stuff i wanted to do that i forgot i wanted to do that needed some lead in and prep time so yeah i went meh and then i have a few subjects that i keep thinking i want to do and then when they come up i'm like i don't want to do that maybe you you can let me geek out on paper crafts at some point because that's been that's yes. a new thing that I'm starting to play with. <laughs> um, your kitty cat. Yeah. Can I just tell you that Kurt and I laid in bed and watched that over and over Aww. again and giggled all that's night. The I'm best. like, I rolled over and I was giggling to myself. And I said, <laughs> I said, Hey, Kurt. And he goes, Yeah. And I said, Do you want to see why I love Lonnie? <laughs> and he goes, Sure. And then I played it and he goes, He giggled so hard. And then he goes, Wait, wait, do it again, do it again. <laughs> He goes, no, wait, play it again. And he's like, so Lonnie made this? And I'm like, yeah. And then she made a video with feeling groovy as the background music. And he's like, yeah, I can see where your guys' puzzle pieces fit together. <laughs> it made me so happy. It was so challenging, but it was so fun. It was so what, so is, worth what it. does Colin think about? Like, what does your kid think when you do shit like that? He's just sitting over there looking at me like, I don't know what he's thinking. I really don't. Like, my mom's, mom's a weirdo. Yeah, exactly. An awesome weirdo. Like, what the hell is that song? What the hell is this Feeling Groovy song? I don't think Colin had ever heard that song before. What? I know. I know. Bonnie. Well, my kid. That I is mean, your bad. Oh, I know. I know. Exactly. Well, I was thinking that, too. I'm like, I don't think my kid's ever heard no, this song. No, my son hates it when I play that shit. He actually likes that song. Yeah. But. I just remember singing it in choir. That's why it pops into my oh, head. Oh, no. Sometimes. I went through a big Simon and Garfunkel phase when I was in <laughs> high school. And I have the Greatest Hits album on vinyl. And yeah. my mom hates the song Cecilia. Oh, I so like I used song. to run in and jump on her bed and sing that to her because it would make her furious. And she'd be like, that song's about a whore. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's <laughs> making <laughs> love in the afternoon and then That's... she's leaving. She's like, Psh, I'm done. Like getting paid for that. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we got off on whores, <laughs> but Vaginas. I don't think there's Vaginas. anything about whores. Wait, were giants at the beginning of this episode or were they being in the last episode? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. You guys, I'm so hungry right now. Yeah. And I had like, That's like me last time. So much yeah. blood taken out of me today. Oh, like, God. We need to like get you four food. tubes of it or something. I was like, are you done yet? There's no point. No. No. <laughs> no. I don't like it. I wish they would just let me take my own blood out. I feel like I would be better at it. But 
Actually, this lady did a good job, though. I don't feel like I'm just great. a little teeny dot. I know my spot, so I'm always like, just do it. Better. I know. She listened to me. I hate good. it when they get all like, ah, whatever. Oh, I'm really? Try this vein else. looks better. I'm like, I know. It's fooling you. It's not. No, this is like the juicy. I, she goes, do you have, she asked, do you have a spot? And I'm like, oh, this spot right here, always super juicy. And she's like, all right. And then, she's like, whoa, it is yes, juicy. Yes, see, we know. Dude, I'm 43 years old. Yeah, I've been getting like, blood taken out of me for ever. I know about that shit. So, next week, it will be, yeah, so, yeah, it'll be too late for us to answer questions. Lonnie's still got her miniatures out from the last episode we recorded, I'm and she's hungry. chopping <laughs> up a miniature cow with a miniature axe yeah. and saying that she's hungry. <laughs> Actually, I should film that really quick so that I can put it, because I've been trying to live tweet when we record. Hold on, let me get my camera out. <laughs> I want to just do a little video, say... Hold on. Go. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> She's going to eat the cow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I'm going to get a turkey sandwich. Because that's what I always get. It does not involve cow at all. I know. I think I'm going to have a veggie one because that was good last mm. time. All right. We're going to Fat City. We need to tell them that we like always talk about Fat, Fat City. City. It's our favorite place to eat. Yeah. It's good. I love it. They have yeah. good food. I had brunch there for Sunday brunch. Nice. It's kind of getting bad. I go there a lot. But it's delicious food. It's delicious food and affordable. And affordable. Yeah. Oh, my God. We have to stop this. <laughs> or that city. Go there today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. We're going to go because we're going crazy and we need to eat. I think they owe us a lunch now. They do. I'm yeah. telling them. All right. So uh, <laughs> next week is our awesome 100th episode. And we love you guys. And thank you for listening for 100 episodes. And until next week, go make some cool shit, yo. Do it now. Good morning, Katie. This is your friend. I'm recording on the new task cam. I'm trying to figure out what the buttons do. But every once in a while, I take a break to poo.